Valheim, a game where you choose your own path, create your own journey, and explore new lands all while defeating various enemies, upgrading your gear, and finally defeating the five bosses. But what if you don't want to fight anyone? What if you just want to build a beautiful base, do some farming, some sailing, some exploration, while at the same time collecting the loot enemies drop and the buffs the bosses give you once you defeat them? Is that even possible? Can you really do all that without raising your weapon? Well, I decided to find out. Welcome to the Pacifist Run. Now the rules for this challenge are simple. One, I am not allowed to kill anyone or anything. And two, no crafting weapons of any kind except the axe for woodcutting and the pickaxe for mining. Well that's pretty much it. On to the video. Now you may be thinking to yourself, how are you planning on defeating the five bosses if you can't attack them? Well the answer to that is simple. Wolves. You see wolves are a very powerful creature that you can tame and breed. All you need to breed them is a trap, some raw meat, and patience. The problem is obtaining the raw meat as you can only get them from animals once you kill them, which obviously I am not allowed to do. The other issue is that wolves only spawn in the mountain biome, and to explore the mountain biome you need either wolf armor which you get from mining silver, which is located by using a wishbone, which is obtained after killing the third boss, bone mass, and is only obtainable in the mountains, or a frost resistance potion, and one of the key ingredients for that is the blood bag which is obtained from killing leeches in the swamp biome. But after a while of some extensive theory crafting, I finally had a plan. The journey begins as we make our viking god brand and arrive in a strange new world by the name of YouTube Clout. Excited to start my new adventure, I notice Hugin arrive in to greet me and immediately proceed to dropkick him in the face, failing the challenge within the first 30 seconds. Now I should have known that with a name like Godbrand, I wouldn't be able to control the bloodlust within. So I start a new character by the name of Pornflakes, and start a new world called Gilinor. This is it, no more silly mistakes. This time every move I make has to be careful and thought out. This time I start off by actually talking to Hugin and listening to his words of wisdom. After a brief conversation, I begin to collect various resources such as food, stone, flint, and berries all around me, as well as exploring the new world and looking for a decent area to build my base. I run into my first dilemma as I stumble onto an abandoned house with a beehive inside of it. Now, normally I would shoot it with a bow and collect the queen bee, but since I'm not allowed to use or craft weapons, I had to improvise, since honey will be a very vital resource for making endgame food. So I destroyed the base of the house and collected the queen bee as it fell to the ground. Now what I usually do in a normal playthrough is build in the meadows biome, close to spawn, and go exploring later on once I'm nice and geared up. But for this playthrough I decided to explore as much as possible to see what kind of map I'm working with and hopefully find a place next to a few biomes close together for easier travel later on. While exploring I got really lucky and found a runestone in the black forest biome showing me where the second boss spawn was located. Continuing onward I came across what seemed to be like a giant mountain biome bordering the meadows and the swamp. This was perfect as there was also an abandoned village with a couple houses really close by which I decided was going to be my new home. So with some renovations I had my first base of operations. As I built my first bed I was yet again greeted by Hugin who decided to check out my new crib. But after a night of passionate lovemaking, I woke up and he was nowhere to be found. Now even though I felt dirty and used after that one night stand, I decided to shrug it off as there was a lot of work to be done. With the base now complete it was time to move on to the second part of my plan taming and breeding some boars. Again, you may be thinking to yourself, what's the point of breeding boars if you can't harvest them for meat? Well, here's the thing. The way Valheim works is that different factions in this game are aggressive towards each other. So the plan was to aggro some skeletons from the black forest and lead them back to my base to slaughter the piggies, which will get me the meat I need to tame a wolf. Now I don't eat a lot, I believe 5 or 6 will be plenty for one wolf. And once I can get that one wolf tamed I can easily hunt with him by my side to get as much raw meat as I want for the future. So I built a little pig pen and set off to find some piggies to occupy it. This was very easy to do as my base is set up in the meadows, which has plenty of boars roaming around. I even got lucky and found a one star boar which actually drops two raw meat at once instead of one like normal. I led them to the pen, 
trapped them, and threw down some berries that I picked up during my exploration which they eat to be tamed. While I waited for them to tame, I decided to do a bit more exploration. As I was out and about, I found three more beehives for my base which was fantastic. And with four in total now, I should have more than enough honey saved up for when I get to the end game. Now while I was waiting for them to tame, I decided to do some hoeing around my base and I started getting harassed by the locals in the area. It looks like I chose to live in a bad part of town so I started making some walls for defense. And after a bit of building and some more exploration, the boars were finally tamed and began breeding. After quite some time, my boars were finally ready to be harvested for their meat, so it was time to go out and bring in some skeletons to do the dirty work for me. I set off and found some not too far from my base. This was actually going to be very easy. Or so I thought. What I didn't anticipate was how difficult this was actually going to be. Apparently somehow I forgot that even though skeletons are found mostly in the black forest biome, they aren't actually part of the factions of enemies that reside there. You see the skeletons are aggressive towards every enemy in the game, which turned out to be a major hindsight in my plan. On my first attempt, the group of skeletons I was leading back came under attack by a sizable grey dwarf platoon and got taken out very quickly. I started to get worried. The next attempt was no better than the first. I found a skeleton with a sword and shield and one with a bow and arrow and attempted to bring them towards my base. During this attempt, I somehow lost the skeleton archer and the other skeleton was defeated by three grey dwarfs patrolling the area. This was not going the way I hoped it would. On my third attempt, I found three skeletons and one of them was a powerful one star warrior. This could be it, I thought. Surely this group is tanky enough to make it back to the base. And well, it was. I did lose one skeleton on my way home since they turn around and run back every now and then, annoyingly enough, but I managed to keep the one star skeleton by my side which was my main focus. I finally get the skeletons back to the base, open the pen and realize the grave mistake I made. You see I didn't realize the strength of the boars. I assumed since they were basically the first creature you encounter in the game that they would go down super quickly and deal almost no damage to the skeletons. Boy was I wrong. You see these little shits are nimble creatures. What they do is attack and run away. A deadly strategy which was too much for the skeletons, as the skeletons themselves are slow and frail. They simply cannot keep up with the boars. Not to mention the fact that I basically had an army of boars and over half of them were powerful one star boars. This was terrible and the skeletons got quickly destroyed. Luckily though from this encounter I did manage to get 4 raw meat so hope was not all lost. All I needed was 5 or 6 meat in total before I could tame my first wolf and after that meat would be no problem. I decided to try something different this time. I thought since skeletons have failed me, maybe I can find a troll to take out the boars for me. It would be much more risky since he could take me out on one hit and my base could suffer some serious damages in the process, but it was worth a shot. So I found a troll and I led him to my base. Now unfortunately, as I quickly found out, the trolls actually don't do friendly fire damage to the wildlife as I desperately tried to put them in harm's way, eventually dying in the process. But I did manage to get the troll to at least knock down a giant tree which my current axe could not cut down and got some fine wood in the process which unlocked a few crafting recipes. So I went back looking for more skeletons as I was very close to getting the last piece of meat that I needed to tame a wolf. Now luckily for me, when I ran into the forest on my fourth attempt, I ran into a group of skeletons that have been fighting the wildlife around them and stumbled onto some deer hide and the final piece I needed. I was finally ready to tame a wolf. Now that I had the raw meat required to tame a wolf, I decided to try my luck and run around the outskirts of the mountain in hopes of finding one wandering around. While running around the edge of the mountain, I did in fact get lucky, but not in the way I wanted to. I actually found the trader spawn, surprisingly, very close to my base. Now this was quite the good fortune as he sells a very good item that increases your inventory weight by 150. Although it wasn't really needed, it was a very good quality of life item that will be very useful later on. Along the way I figured I'd venture into some burial chambers to look for some shirtling cores, another key resource in progressing further into the game as I would need them to build portals, a smelter, charcoal kin, and etc. Now I didn't really need a lot of cores for what I needed to do, but 5 was the minimum amount and if I could get around 10 that would be ideal. And I did manage to find 2 cores in the first burial chambers I visited. Unfortunately though, as I ran around the entire mountain biome, I was unable to find a wolf. So I decided to try and venture deeper into the mountain by building bonfires so that I wouldn't die to freeze damage. After getting all the supplies needed in order to build multiple bonfires and a trap, I set out to explore the mountain. Now Lady Luck was clearly on my side because I didn't need to go far at all. As I placed down my workbench to build a bonfire, I noticed a wolf staring right at me. Excited at the opportunity and very scared of fucking up, I nervously started building my first ever wolf trap. But not paying attention to my surroundings, the wolf jump scared the shit out of me with a sneak attack out of nowhere dealing a massive amount of damage. I tried to run away knowing that if I take one more hit like that I'll be done for. 
Seeing my stamina low and knowing that I can't outrun him, I tried to block his next attack and in doing so, took another huge hit taking me down to 6 health. I was in such a panicked state of mind that I didn't realize at the time that my trash wooden shield can't handle powerful attacks such as these. And not realizing my predicament and thinking that what I did worked, I tried to block an attack and ended up dying a painful death. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never understand. After dying, I realized that I needed to prepare a trap to bait the wolf into before luring one away from the mountain. So I set up a workbench and built a stake wall out of the finest materials I could find. Once everything was prepared, I went back to find another wolf, which I did really fast as one popped up out of nowhere and killed me in a single blow. <coughs> I quickly respawned and ran back more determined than ever to get this wolf. I jumped to get his attention and ran as fast as I could into the trap I built. After a hard thumping sweat inducing chase, I managed to successfully lure him into the trap and wall off his escape, but trapping myself in the process. Luckily though, I did manage to improvise and separate us by building another stake wall. I dropped the 7 raw meat for him and made my way out of the trap. All I had to do now was wait for him to be tamed and I would have my own good boy to hunt with. Now in order for the wolf to start taming, there couldn't be any enemies around, otherwise he would go into attack mode and break through the walls trying to get to them. But of course, me being in a bad part of town and all, I had the locals start harassing my good boys since I guess there was no pet policy around here. So I built a second set of walls around him which seemed to do the trick. After that, I built my own walled off area and watched him like a hawk. There was no way I was going to lose him after all that. After cautiously checking up on him, I was very pleasantly surprised to see that he was tamed and had him follow me back to my base like the good boy I knew he was. The next day I decided to take him out for his very first hunting trip as I still needed more raw meat to find him a mate to breed with. And boy was it great. We took on countless boars together like it was nothing. Deer were a bit trickier though since they get spooked pretty easily but we managed to get a few together and I even got one of the two deer trophies I needed to spawn the first boss. But as we were having a great time bonding while chasing down deer, disaster struck. While chasing the deer, we ran into a troll. I waited to see if the deer we just killed dropped the last trophy I needed, and as I waited the troll got into attack range and almost killed me with one blow. My good boy getting worried for me jumped straight into action trying to save my life. And he almost took down the troll single handedly, but took a serious blow almost killing him in the process. I couldn't let this happen, so I decided to distract him just long enough for my good boy to recover from the last hit, but I died in the process. As I exhaled my final breath, I saw him kill the evil troll and died with a smile on my face. I ran back as quickly as I could after responding, praying, just praying that my good boy was still alive. And as I arrived to my dead body, I see him standing over it mourning my death. We embraced each other and decided to go home. But as we were heading back, I saw another deer and thought, maybe just one more for the road. And after successfully catching up to the deer, I go to pick up the meat and notice he dropped the final trophy that we needed to summon the first boss, Ichthyr. The trip was a massive success, and it was now time for the final part of this chapter, taming a second wolf to breed with my good boy. So I set off towards the mountain again and quickly found another wolf in the same spot as the first. I assumed this must be a spawn point or something because the place was crawling with them. I ended up dying again on my first try, but on my second attempt, I did manage to lure the wolf into the trap. All I had to do now was wait for a bit and bring the wolf back to the base. After a bit of time passed, the wolf was fully tamed and I brought her back to the base to meet my good boy. It was love at first sight, and I built them their own private area where they were going to be doing the dirty. After no time at all, I woke up to find two more cute little cubs waiting for me outside. I could tell right away that they would grow up to be strong, good boys. With phase 1 of my plan complete, it was now time to focus on acquiring endgame gear. Now, clearly I can't use weapons, so I'm not talking about that. What I am talking about are the tools I need, and of course, the armor. The tools I need to progress are a bronze axe which will be used to cut down birch and oak trees for fine wood, which is used to craft a variety of things in the game, and an iron pickaxe which I will need to mine silver ore in the mountain. Now the thing is, I need to beat the first boss, Ichthyr, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, to get my very first pickaxe. Without it, there is no way for me to get any kind of ore, and without ore, I can't make any armor. Now I plan on skipping the bronze and iron age armor and going straight to silver, since I believe with a sizable wolf army, I can survive in the swamp and the mountain biome. But the plains are a very different story. The death squidos alone do massive damage, not to mention the fuelings and their variants. So silver is definitely needed to make the wolf armor before I go there, and to get silver I need to defeat the very first three bosses. Ichthyr for the pickaxe, the elder for the swamp key, and finally bone mass for the wishbone which is used to locate the silver veins. Before getting tin, copper, and iron ore, I needed to first build myself a charcoal kiln and a smelter for refining them. And for that I still needed to get certling cores which are found in the burial chambers located in the forest biome. 
Now, I already had two, but I need to get at least five or preferably ten. The reason I only need five is because the kiln and the smelter each need five cores to build. And once I'm done using the charcoal kiln, I could then destroy it, get my resources back, and build myself a smelter. Ten or more cores would be ideal though, because the more you can build, the faster the process will be, obviously. Again, the only problem is burial chambers are filled with skeletons roaming around, and unfortunately I can't bring my good boys long to defend me, so I will have to rely on my Dark Souls dodging and blocking skills while I'm down there. The first burial chambers I went to was pretty intense. I ended up getting three cores, but the process was... a bit sketchy. I ran into some very persistent skeletons that chased me the entire time I was down there, and even body blocked me at a dead end after I grabbed one of their precious cores that they were defending. I did struggle a bit trying to get out, but in the end they were no match for my cunning maneuvers. The next one I went to was probably the worst cave I've ever encountered, period. Right away I run into like 4 or 5 skeletons, and as I run away to a different hallway I'm greeted by a 1 star skeleton archer. As I run back I end up getting sandwiched between all these fuckers and taking a lot of damage which brings me down to 6 health. So I nope right on out of there before I die, and unfortunately I leave the cave without a single core to my name. The cave after that was basically the same. Too many skeletons so I had to dip on out of there. The fourth one had a bunch of cores and I managed to grab four of them without too many issues, but as I tried to dodge two skeletons attacking me I ended up getting hit one too many times and dying right next to the fifth shirtling core. So I ran all the way back, recovered my items, and took the fifth core that was rightfully mine from the cave which brought my total for this trip to eight, and with the two I found before I tamed the wolves it brought my total to ten. I decided it was too much of a hassle to look for more and since ten was a good amount and more than enough to get the job done I decided to head back home. Now I still had to wait for my wolves to breed me an army, so in the meantime I did some more hunting with them for meat, expanded their area a bit since I noticed it was starting to get a bit crowded, chopped some trees, and of course, got harassed by the locals yet again. So I brought out my good boy for protection and almost watched him die as a falling tree fell on him. After a while of waiting I had my first army ready to take on the first boss, Ichthyr. So I gathered up the good boy army and I headed out on a long journey back to where it all began. Along the way my good boys destroyed literally everything in their path. Boars, deer, necks, grey dwarves, and their variants. Even the trolls didn't stand a chance against them. Except for one who actually managed to get in one swing before getting completely annihilated by them. I was feeling pretty good and confident about this trip. We finally made it to the summoning altar where we were greeted by Hugin who gave me a quick rundown of what to do. I built a quick little rest stop to get my resting bonus up before the fight and fed my good boys some food so that they recovered their lost health from the journey. It was finally time. I placed the deer trophies in my hotbar and proceeded to summon Ichthyr. It was time to see what my army was made of, I thought to myself. But what happened then shocked me. You see, I greatly underestimated the power that I commanded. Before Ichthyr even finished his spawning animation, he was already dead. I laughed as I picked up the hard antler he dropped, which was the piece I needed to craft my very first pickaxe. As well as the trophy I got from defeating him, which would give me a pretty useful buff that when activated allows me to have 60% less stamina drain when running and jumping for 5 whole minutes. So I picked up my rewards and I went back to the spawn area to hang the first boss trophy and activate my very first buff. Now since I didn't suffer any casualties during my fight with Ichthyr, I decided I could basically go straight to the next boss and take him out. Although I did have a few concerns. You see, Ichthyr, he's, he's barely considered a boss. He's basically the tutorial boss fight, and the Elder, from personal experience, is quite a tank compared to him. He also has some decent AoE attacks that do a good bit of damage, as well as a close range attack where he stomps his foot if you're close to him, which my good boys will be. I also still needed to collect three ancient seeds in order to summon him, which are dropped from Grey Dwarf Shamans, Brutes, and the nests where they spawn. So as I made my way home, I made sure to keep my eye out for them. While I was making my way back, I ran into a shaman which dropped me my first one, and then I found one of their nests, which I hung around by for a minute or two and got the remaining two seeds. I was now ready to summon and fight the Elder. Since I was close back to my base already, I decided to make a quick pit stop and let my good boys rest from the long journey and recover some of their health. In the meantime, I made myself a few workbench upgrades and crafted myself some troll hide armor, which I got from all the trolls that we slaughtered along the way. I wasn't really planning on making it, but I had the resources so I figured, eh, why not? I had been running around with no pants on since the beginning of the game and the troll armor does look pretty damn good, as well as it gives a nice 25% sneak bonus, which will make hunting deer even easier than it already is. After some much needed rest, it was time to head out once again to fight the next boss. I had much better armor and my good boys were fully healed and ready to go so we set off. The Elder boss location was much closer than the first one, so we got there fairly quickly. I placed the Ancient Seeds in my hotbar and proceeded to summon the Elder. Once again, before he even finished getting up, 
he was already dead. This fight was just as one-sided as the first, and as he fell to the ground he dropped me his head which gave me another decent buff that allowed me to chop down trees incredibly fast. And of course, more importantly, the Swamp Key, which allows me to enter the Swamp Crypts to farm Iron Ore. I was feeling incredibly confident. This challenge will be a piece of cake if I can take out all these bosses so quickly. Or so I thought. And boy was I wrong. Now, Bone Mass is no joke. He is said to arguably be the hardest boss fight in the game by the majority of players. Not only does he hit hard, but he also poisons you as well. When he hits you, you're poisoned. He has an AoE attack where he vomits a poison death cloud. And he throws enemies at you who, you guessed it, poison you. Even though I was feeling incredibly confident about the way my good boys handled the first two boss fights, I definitely had my concerns for this guy. Especially because the developers of this game just recently buffed him so I had no idea what to expect. But there was no way around it. I had to kill him to progress any further. So my plan was simple. Find some crypts in the swamp to explore, collect iron ores to build a pickaxe and the shield as my wooden one was pretty much useless at this point in the game, and farm up the enemies in the swamp for resources to make better food, poison resist potions, as well as the frost resistance potions for the mountain. So I get back to base and I head out to the swamp biome not too far from where I was. Unfortunately though, this swamp biome was very small and had literally nothing there. So I continued exploring and I eventually ran into the plains which is way too dangerous for me to go through. And I would definitely not survive if I ran into a death squeedle which there are quite a lot of in the plains. The only thing I could do now was set sail in search of new land since there was no more left for me to explore on this continent. But before I could do that I would need to build a boat. And to do that I would need to make some bronze nails. So I located a copper vein and proceeded to use my brand new pickaxe for the first time ever. Immediately after starting to mine, I was mobbed by two trolls and like, eight grey dwarves. It was kind of annoying until I realized I could use the trolls to help out with my mining. So honestly, I didn't even need to kill the first boss to get the bronze bars, but I did eventually have to do it in the long run to complete the challenge, so it wasn't that big of a deal. After getting the copper, I went to look for tin ore, and after doing some running around, I found a bunch near the water. I mined myself a full inventory, and once again, had a troll help me out a little bit. With more than enough tin and copper, I went back to the base to start the process of smelting the ores to make everything I needed. While I was mining, I had built myself two charcoal kilns and kept refilling them with wood every time I went back to the base, so I had plenty of coal stocked up that would last me a very, very long time. When I got back, I destroyed them and built myself two smelters. I then put in the ores and went to sleep to speed up the process. As I woke up, I grabbed all the copper and unlocked a whole bunch of new things that I could build. The main thing being the forge. This is where I would be making all my tools, armor, and nails. So I grabbed my tin and copper, turned them into bronze bars, made myself a bronze pickaxe for faster mining in the swamp crypts, a bronze axe for chopping fine wood, and of course made myself some bronze nails which unlocked the carved ship for getting off the island I was on. While getting ready to set sail, I decided to dismantle one of my smelters and use the certling cores to build myself a portal at the base just in case something happens and I needed to go back there really quickly. So with everything ready, it was finally time to set sail. Built myself a workbench near the shore and placed down my brand new boat while getting pelted in the back with rocks from the annoying grey dwarves. I got on the boat and I started looking for my next island. After a really short but very pleasant time sailing, I found myself a new island to explore. I hopped off the boat and dismantled it to get my supplies back and then I built myself a small little base with another portal connecting me to the first island just in case I died somehow. Once that was done I headed off to explore these unknown lands. After a little bit of exploration, I found myself a swamp biome which looked promising. So I went right in looking for crypts, and, if lucky, the next boss spawn location. I found my first crypt, and I ran inside. Now again, something I didn't really think about before was how dangerous it would be trying to collect the iron ore. You see, you only get a small amount of iron ore from mining these giant, muddy scrap piles in the swamps. The majority of iron ore is found in the chests scattered throughout the crypts. But the swamp crypts are filled with way more dangerous enemies than the skeletons from the Black Forest burial chambers. The crypts have draugers, which are like undead vikings I guess. I don't really know for sure, but they fucking hit hard. And even worse than that, there are these annoying fucking blobs literally everywhere which poison you for 20 seconds if they hit you. So unless you have good food or a poison resistance potion, which I don't, getting hit by one of them is a death sentence. So yeah, that's basically what I have to deal with until I find enough iron ore for a shield, pickaxe, and a few other upgrades in the game. The first two crypts I explored were kind of uneventful. I only managed to collect 14 iron ores from the scrap piles and I found two chests which didn't have any iron in them. The third crypt though I got very lucky on. There was a chest guarded by two draugers who I ran past taking a bit of damage to find the jackpot. The chest had 19 ores in them. I couldn't even carry it all and I had to drop some on the floor that I would come back to on my second trip. I left the crypt, got back to the portal, deposited my ores, 
picked up a pickaxe, cooked some food, and I ran back to get some more. The next trip down to the swamps, I just did more of the same. Just a lot of mining, dodging enemies, and exploring the swamp looking for the next bone mass spawn location. After a short amount of time, I had collected a total of 51 ores thanks to another lucky chest I found which had 20 iron in it. And I decided it was time to sail back to upgrade myself a new pickaxe and a new shield. So I ran back to the shore, built myself a ship, deposited the iron and the 5 out of 10 withered bones I needed to summon the bone mass, and set sail back home. When I got back, I rebuilt the smelters and put in the iron ores. While I waited for that, I took my good boys out for a little more hunting in the swamps near my base. There may not have been any crypts down there, but there were a lot of enemies and I needed their resources. I did manage to clear out a good chunk of the swamp and collected a ton of entrails used for sausages and a ton of blood bags which were used to make the frost resistance potions. Back at my base, I built myself a cauldron to make mead and a fermenter to ferment the mead into potions. I then grabbed the iron from the smelters and went to the forge to make myself the best pickaxe the game currently had to offer. After that, I made myself some sausages as well as a shield which has a massive upgrade from the wooden shield that I've been using up until now. And I headed back to the swamp for more iron and more importantly, to find the bone mass spawn location. After a couple more trips of collecting iron, I finally located the runestone that revealed the location of the boss. But unfortunately, it was not in the swamp that I was located in. And from the looks of it, I had to go on another sailing adventure to a distant land far, far away from where I was located, which wasn't great because I have never transported wolves by sea and this looked like quite the long journey. But the important thing was that I finally knew where he was and where I had to go. It was time to set sail and prepare for the battle with Bone Mass. I decided that since the place to summon him was so far away and I didn't want to lose my good boys in case of a serpent attack, that I would only bring two with me, build a base on the new island, and wait while they breed me an army before I attempted to fight him. I mean sure, it would take a while, but I could just AFK and watch some Netflix while I waited. But before I brought along my good boys, I needed to survey the land and plan the most optimal route. So I set sail just to find out that my starting island was actually quite bigger than I thought. I ended up sailing in a giant circle in what appeared to be a lake instead of the ocean. So I tried again but this time going as far east as possible before building my ship and sailing off. This time I successfully arrived at the island with the boss. I set down a portal to connect to my main base and brought back the supplies from there to build myself a safe space where I could breed more good boys. Once everything was built, I went to look at the area where Bone Mass was to be summoned. It seemed like a pretty small and chill swamp compared to the others, with very few enemies around, and honestly, it felt like a blessing. So I went back to my base, grabbed a few good boys, and headed down to the most eastern shore to begin our sailing adventure. I also decided to use some of my iron nails that I built earlier that day to build myself the biggest and best ship in the game for this voyage, because I didn't want to risk the wolves falling off or jumping off the small little carved ship. So I set the new ship down, and I attempted to get the good boys on it. Without exaggerating, this took me around a half hour to figure out since I've never done anything like this before and boy did I struggle. It seemed like no matter what I did, they wouldn't follow me on board. But after a long, long struggle, I finally figured out that I could use my shield to push them in and finally set sail. The trip started off kind of sketchy. It looked like the wolves were glitching the entire time and the ship started taking random damage every now and then. But when we arrived at the island, I realized the wolves weren't glitching during our ride, but were actually getting it on with each other because the moment we landed, a newborn cub appeared out of thin air, jump-starting the breeding process. So I brought them inside the pen and pushed the cub inside. Now all I had to do was wait. After a long, long time of AFKing, it was time for my first attempt. I rounded up the good boys and set off into the swamp. Not long after heading out, I encountered some enemies near a circular stone building of some sort that went underground. I guess there was an enemy down there or something because without so much as a second thought, my good boys ran down there and got stuck immediately. I think the issue was that after so much inbreeding going on, this batch of good boys weren't the brightest, but I still loved them nonetheless. My only two options at this point was to leave them down there to eventually drown and die while waiting for more to breed, or to quickly alt F4 out of the game and try again since the process wouldn't be saved. I ended up deciding to close the game because letting them drown down there seemed a little too cruel for me. I logged back in and I tried again. This time I safely made it to Bone Mass, put in the withered bones I collected from the crypts to summon him and watched him spawn. I was shocked and surprised because when Bone Mass spawned, the wolves did no damage to him at all. Instead, they were completely wiped out immediately by his poison attack. Now, I thought this may have been a glitch or a fluke or something, so I closed the game and tried again. I logged back in to try one more time, feeling really worried that this might not work and that I would fail the challenge. I ran back with my good boys, summoned him, and watched him slaughter them all immediately just like before. 
This was bad. How was I going to defeat this monster without the help of my good boys? I logged off and I started theory crafting. I tried thinking of many different ways I could possibly do this. Maybe I could chop down some trees and have them fall on him doing the damage. Maybe build some spike walls all over the place and lead him through them. I even tried luring different mobs such as trolls to him, but after doing some tests, nothing seemed to work. This was terrible. Was I really going to have to end the challenge right here after all I've accomplished? I didn't know what to do until I came up with a crazy idea. The strategy I came up with was going to be very long and very tedious, but it was the only thing that would work. I found out from a YouTuber named Firespark81 that you could actually dig yourself inside one of these giant indestructible trees in the swamp. So what I did was I built some crafting benches on top of them, summoned the boss and ran inside. What I did then was place down a bunch of stake walls that were just barely poking out of the tree to where bone mass would run into them. And so, armed with an alarming amount of spare time and weaponized autism, I ran back and forth inside of this tree for about an hour and a half, repairing them until he finally died. Now, technically, I was not attacking him. All I was doing was standing my ground. I mean, come on, it's not my fault he kept running into them. That was his own choice. Anyways, after a long ass time, he finally died and I picked up the wishbone needed to find the silver veins. I could finally leave this swampy hellhole. The end was so close that I could almost taste it. With Bone Mass defeated, it was time to begin the final preparations before defeating the last two remaining bosses, Modor and Yagluth. Yagluth I was not too worried about since he doesn't have any crazy mechanics that my good boys couldn't deal with. Modor was a different story. You see, Modor is a dragon boss who half the time is flying in the air and shooting ice projectiles that could easily kill me in one shot if I'm not careful. And after what happened with Bone Mass, I didn't think my good boys who have gone through quite a lot of inbreeding would be able to handle the final two bosses. So it was time for me to upgrade my army into a two-star wolf army. I also needed to upgrade my troll armor into wolf armor and for that I needed wolf pelts which luckily for me I already had from losing so many good boys and silver which I could now locate with my newly acquired wishbone. And once I got all that I felt hopeful that I could complete this challenge. The first thing I did after defeating Bone Mass was go to the spawn and activate the new buff I got from Bone Mass which gave me a large amount of physical resistance for 5 whole minutes. This would be the buff I stick with until the end of the game. When I arrived home, I grabbed some frost resistance potions and my good boys for protection and went to look for silver at the giant mountain by my base. While exploring the mountain, I realized that my good boys were actually very useless while I was up here. You see, they don't attack other wolves, golems absolutely destroy them, and they can't fight the drakes since they are always up in the air. I could already tell this was not going to be easy. The first silver vein that I located was guarded by a golem, and I was forced to run away to look for a different spot. I find another silver vein and out pops up a drake, but before I manage to escape him, he snipes me and I die. Yeah, this was going to be much more difficult than I had anticipated. So I respawn, grab another frost resistance potion, and run back to my body to recover my gear. And this time, I get creative. What I did is I dug under the silver vein and used it as defense against the flying drake. And the strategy actually worked pretty well. I managed to get a full inventory of silver and I ran back to deposit it at my base. The next trip went even better. I found two of the three dragon eggs that I needed to summon the boss, and luckily enough, I actually found the boss spawn very quickly. All I had to do now was collect just a little bit more silver to make some wolf armor and tame a two-star wolf before I could attempt to fight Modor. After exploring a large part of the mountain, I actually remembered that I have discovered a trader a long time ago and decided to pay him a visit with all the gold and valuables that I have collected throughout my adventures. Hopefully by now I had accumulated enough wealth to buy myself the items that increase my carrying capacity since it would really help out with the silver mining. So I loaded up the smelters with the silver I had acquired, grabbed all my valuables and headed off to the trader. When I arrived I sold everything that I had to him and was happy to see that I had just enough for Megging Yord. And yes, I know I probably pronounced that incorrectly, give me a break. I put it on right away and I went back to the mountain. This time I found a really good silver vein that had a golem and two drakes nearby fighting it out and not focusing on me at all. So I made a couple trips back and forth and got a fuckload of silver. 
more than enough for the armor that I needed and to upgrade it a few times. I went back, smelted it all, and made myself the very first upgrade. The wolf cape to honor the good boys that have fallen in battle trying to protect me. After that I made a chest, the legs, and finally, the shield. I was now ready to tame the two star wolf. Taming a two star wolf was the last crucial step of my plan and quite possibly the hardest one. You see two star wolves only spawn at night time and if you don't capture one during the night they will run away and despawn. A day cycle lasts 21 minutes and the night cycle only lasts 9 minutes so I didn't have much time at all and would have to be very quick and very careful. Now I should also mention that at the time of this recording which was around 8 months ago, if you left the wolf's radius in the morning he would despawn even if he's fully tamed. So the only way to obtain a 2 star wolf that won't despawn is to breed him with a regular daytime wolf and when a 2 star cub is born they won't despawn ever. So I began the preparations and I built a giant pit that I was going to trap the wolf in and began looking for one immediately. It took me 4 in game days before I found a 2 star wolf. I lured him to the pit I built while being chased by him and his pack, but when I got to the pit he wouldn't jump in and instead aggroed on some grey dwarves nearby. When I jumped out of the pit to try again he was gone. I tried looking for him but unfortunately he was nowhere to be found. It took me 7 in game days before I found another 2 star wolf. I tried to lead this wolf into the pit but again he wouldn't jump inside. Luckily for me I had my old trap right next to it and managed to trap him inside that one. I finally had my 2 star wolf. All I had to do now was watch him like a hawk until he finished taming and lead him to my base to breed. About an hour and a half goes by and I'm getting really excited and thinking just how lucky I got and then disaster strikes. In the worst possible moment I get a random event and two trolls spawn. I was actually on my phone at the time so I didn't notice at first and when I finally did it was already too late. Looking back at the footage, I might have been able to prevent this if I was quick enough, but unfortunately I was super tired and not thinking straight. So basically what happened is I started to panic. I took out my hammer to destroy the walls to run away, but before I could click the middle mouse button, the troll swings and destroys the crafting bench, which prevents me from breaking the walls and escaping. At this point, I was helpless, and his next swing killed me. I respawned and I ran back to the wolf, but when I got there, he was gone. Not because he escaped, but because I was too far away from him, so he just despawned. It is currently 3am in the morning for me, and 4 in-game days later until I find another 2 star wolf. I run him back to the trap and barely avoid dying as I successfully trap him inside. This was the one. I could feel it in my bones. It looks like I have to stay up all night while he tames and breeds me a cub because there is no way I'm failing after this last attempt. Around 2 hours goes by and the wolf is finally tamed. I did it. The hardest part in the longest grind was finally over. All I had to do now was wait until nighttime and walk him to my base to breed him, and then I'm finally done, is what I thought. What happened next will make you laugh, but tilted the fuck out of me. It is now 5am and I'm half asleep. I jump down to check on the wolf and take some fall damage leaving me at 10 health, which by the way I didn't notice. I then climb the ladder to get inside the wolf pen and as I jump down I take more fall damage and die. I respawn and run back praying that he's still there but deep down knowing that he's gone. I just sit there for a bit, depressed and in disbelief. And after a couple of minutes, I finally log off and go to sleep. 16 in-game days later, which is about 8 hours, I find another 2 star wolf. I've actually given up trying to get one on that cursed mountain and I am now on a smaller, more chill mountain this time. I managed to lure him into a small pit I built and build a small hut around and begin to wait once again. Two more hours go by and the good boys are finally tamed and I was able to get back to my base in one piece and I managed not to run into anyone except for a few grey dwarves and skeletons. Although I did have a mini panic attack when one of my boars tried to sabotage me by not letting the two star good boy inside my base. Since nighttime was almost over and I really didn't want the wolf to despawn when he was so close. But thank god everything worked out in the end because I really didn't have it in me to do it again. After making sure my good boys were nice and safe, I left my PC and I went to make some food while I waited for them to breed. When I got back, I noticed some damage numbers in the background and went to investigate. It was a grey dwarf brute attacking the walls of my base and pissing off my good boys which I quickly handled. As I walked around to the other side of my base, I noticed a fallen tree that wasn't there before and out of the corner of my eye I see a little baby wolf cub. As I look at him, wondering how he got out here, I check back to the place where my 2 star good boy was supposed to be and notice the wall is broken and that he's gone. Realization hits me like a ton of bricks, and I immediately put all my focus into saving this 2 star wolf cub. I'm assuming some enemy must have gotten way too close to the walls and my good boy broke out and ran off. I think at this point I probably would have given up if I hadn't gotten lucky and had a 2 star cub left behind. There was also a 50% chance that I would get a 2 star cub or a regular wolf and luckily I ended up getting the one I needed. 
I brought the cub and one regular good boy into the center of my base, walled them off, and I dug a giant moat that protected my entire base to avoid any more issues in the future. Which is honestly something that I should have done a long ass time ago. But it was finally done. A two star good boy has finally been acquired. It was almost time to fight Modor. It was almost time to fight Modor. With the amount of time I put into getting a two star good boy, I just wanted to be done with the mountains as fast as possible and move on to the plains. So while my good boys were breeding, I went back up to the mountains to set up the dragon egg offering needed to summon Modor. I grabbed all three eggs and I placed them into the offering area. I had a lot of time to kill while waiting for the good boys to breed, so I built a little house with the portal inside that I could run into to replenish my resting bonus before the fight, or in case things got hairy and I needed to get out of there for any reason. Once everything was in place, there really wasn't anything else that I needed to do besides AFK a really long time and wait for my two star good boy army to be ready. Two days go by and I log into Valheim to see that there has been a patch. I read the patch notes and laugh at the irony of the situation. The patch I'm referring to is, Night spawning wolves should be easier to tame now, aka should stop trying to run away and despawn after starting to tame. With the game being in early access, I knew things could change at any moment, but this, this was pretty funny, in a not so funny kind of way. After what felt like an eternity of waiting, my army was finally ready. I grabbed all my good boys, and I set off to fight Modor. I arrived to the boss's location and led my good boys into their pen for a minute while I built a bed and slept so that I could fight in the daytime. It was finally time to summon the dragon and be done with the mountains forever. So I walked up to the altar and I summoned Modor. Now I didn't really have a strategy going into this. I knew Modor would be in the air most of the time so all I had to do was keep her focus on me so that she didn't target my good boys. And when she landed, that's when my good boys would go in for the kill. It pretty much worked out just the way I hoped it would, although I did take one hit from her attack, but overall it was pretty much flawless. The damage my two star good boys did was insane, and it looked like they had much more health too because they took some damage and none of them died. Once Modor landed, it was already over. She was defeated incredibly fast and didn't have a chance to get back into the air since my good boys pinned her down and mauled her to death very quickly. I picked up her head and the dragon tears she dropped which was used to build a final crafting station which unlocked a variety of new things. I was now done with the mountains and I had one more boss left. It was finally time to conquer the plains. I or I guess I should say my good boys have beaten Ichthyr, the Elder, Bonemass and now Modor and there was one more boss left, Yagluth. Now like I mentioned earlier, Yagluth himself I was not worried about whatsoever. From what I could tell he has no crazy abilities that my good boys could not handle. What I was worried about though are the plains themselves. The plains are by far the most dangerous biome filled with death squidos who I wasn't sure how my good boys would react to as well as fuelings and their deadly variants. They are almost always in giant groups and pack a serious punch especially the higher leveled ones. Raiding their villages for the totems I needed to summon Yagluth would be an intense all out war between them and my good boys, but I believed that we could do it. I would also finally be able to make some endgame food from the resources I collected in the plains and upgrade my armor and equipment one last time. There was a giant plains biome I discovered a while ago right near the mountain I was on, so instead of going back to my original base, me and my good boys set off to build a new base bordering the plains. I found a really small chunk of the meadows biome right next to the plains and decided that this was where I was going to set up my new home. While I was setting up my base, my good boys had their very first encounter with some death squidos. They did take a good bit of damage as they tried to kill it and one of the weaker ones died off, but they did manage to take it out which is what really mattered. My worries were put to rest a little and I continued to build. While I was building, my good boys had an encounter with their first fueling as well. I watched a little Yoda one-shot one of my regular wolves and then proceeded to get destroyed by the rest of the pack. Now they were definitely powerful little fuckers, but I think that I could handle them with a sizable army. I finished up the base with my two star wolves being inside and breeding while my regular good boys patrolled the outside. It was time to look for Yagluth. I grabbed some good boys and I set off on yet another adventure. Along the way I picked up some cloud berries used for stamina potions and even developed a strategy for dealing with the death squidos. What I found out was that if I block an attack from them, they get stunned just long enough for my good boys to jump in and handle them. I finally felt like I was part of the pack. Unfortunately though, I didn't make it far and my remaining good boys died from the insane amount of death squidos we encountered along the way. 
The regular good boys just didn't cut it this late into the game, so I'm glad my effort of getting the two star good boys was not made in vain. I just barely made it back to base while I was being chased by four death squeedos the entire time, and it looked like I had to wait for backup from my two star good boys before going any further. After a long ass time, I had myself a large army and I set off once again. Right out of the gate, I was greeted by three loxes which my good boys swiftly took out, and I finally obtained some high tier food. After two in-game days of running around and exploring, I decided to build a little house for the good boys and portaled myself back to base to cook up some lox meat and sleep. I was beginning to realize just how incredibly massive my starting island was and prayed that I could find where Yoguth was located very soon. I was almost out of blood bags and completely out of entrails by this time, so when I ran by a new swamp, I decided to go and try and grab some more. As I cleared out the swamp, I noticed another plains biome with the first fueling camp I've seen so far. My good boys were low in numbers from so many battles, but I decided to test my luck and see how they did against them. So I placed a portal down just in case anything went wrong, and I ran towards them. Now, a few things happened. First is that I finally found some flax and barley, which meant that I could now replant them at my base and have an unlimited amount. Second is that my good boys were too low in numbers and got killed off pretty much immediately. And the third thing is that I died. But... As I was preparing to go back for my items, I looked at my saved clips, like I always do before giving it a title, and noticed something that I missed in all the chaos. It was a rune stone. You see, after my good boys were killed off, I was way too focused on the enemies around me while trying to loot their camp amidst all the chaos, that I didn't realize that there was a rune stone close by. I portaled back, ran to loot my dead body, and went to investigate. And it turned out to be exactly what I was looking for, because as I clicked to read the rune stone, I was revealed the location of the final boss, and he was close. All I had to do now was make some good food, build up a massive army of good boys, and find the five totem pieces I needed to summon Yogluth. So I waited a bit and built up a new good boy army and set off to explore the plains once again to look for the totems. I ended up running into a huge village with way too many fuelings to deal with and ended up losing all of my good boys immediately. But I did manage to find my first totem. Their sacrifice was not in vain. After that incident I realized that I had to change up my strategy since I was getting too impatient at this point and having to wait for my wolves to breed. So I decided to grab some stamina and health potions as well as some high tier food and try to run through the villages alone to find the totems because every single good boy I lost in battle killed me little by little on the inside. It was much harder this way, but I was so close to the end that I decided to give it a shot. Surprisingly enough, dodging the fueling attacks was much easier than I thought as long as I was aware of my surroundings. Dealing with the death squidos was the biggest issue. You see, once they get you in their sights, it's nearly impossible to lose them, and they will take your health down very quickly if you don't block their attacks. But blocking their attacks drains your stamina fast, and if you have more than two of them attacking you, it's pretty much a guaranteed death sentence. It was definitely a challenge dealing with them, but I did manage to find all five totems after some time. I headed back to the base, buzzing with joy, knowing that all I had to do now was prepare some food, make the final set of armor, build up one more army to finish off Yagluth, and complete the challenge. Once I got back, I harvested some barley that I planted a while ago, put it in the windmill to make barley flour, which is a resource in making endgame food, and made a quick trip to the new swamp that I discovered for more iron so that I could make myself some padded armor, and the new smelter that I needed to smelt the black metal scraps I got from the great fueling slash good boy war that took place just a short while ago. I ran back to my base, made some coal, made the iron, you know the drill. And after that I built the beefy looking blast furnace and loaded it up with some black metal scraps. I then picked up the barley flour that unlocked some amazingly overpowered food which would increase my health and stamina up tremendously. Once the black metal finished processing, I grabbed it and unlocked the crafting option for the shield that I was looking for. It was all coming together now. I ran to the forge and I crafted it immediately. Once that was done, I grabbed the ingredients needed for my endgame food and I went to the cauldron to make myself some lox meat pie as well as some blood pudding. After that I made the spinning wheel, loaded it up with flax, and after waiting around I picked up the linen thread made which unlocked me the final upgrade, the padded armor. I ran to the forge and made it immediately. I decided to hold on to the wolf armor as a symbol of all the good boys that have fallen in battle protecting me, however I did make myself the padded helmet since I've been using this garbage troll hood since the very beginning of the game. I will admit that it didn't look as cool, but god damn was it good in terms of defense upgrades. And with all the important grindy stuff now done and out of the way, I grabbed all my good boys and set off to build a camp near Yagluth and prepare for the final battle. With all the problems that I've run into on this adventure, I wanted to do this last fight flawlessly. Basically, I wanted to finish this challenge with a bang, and to do that, I decided to breed the biggest wolf army possible. 
I found myself a nice little meadows area very close to the Yagluth spawn and began the preparations. I then dug out a giant moat so that my breeding grounds were big enough to avoid the issue of hitting the breeding capacity since I believe there is a limit on how many wolves can be within a certain range. I don't remember the exact numbers since this footage was from 8 months ago and I'm just now editing it all together but basically I managed to get around it by splitting them up and constantly moving them around and stuff. After a long, long, incredibly fucking long time, I had my army. And what an impressive army it was. Yes, I did overdo it, but I felt unstoppable. I honestly felt like a literal god with the power that I had commanded before me. It was finally time. I gathered up my army, and I set off to fight the final boss, Yagluth. After a very brisk walk, I arrived at the spawn location, and I placed down the five totems for the sacrifice to summon this puny god, and I watched him spawn. I was so confident in my good boys that I sat down and watched him tear Yagluth limb from limb as they mounted him and absolutely tore him apart in mere seconds. It was a flawless victory, and he stood no chance. I almost felt bad for him as I watched him die. Almost. I picked up his head, and I went to the nearest mountain biome. It was time to say goodbye. With a heavy heart, I released my good boys and I said my final farewell. I could not have asked for better companions during this adventure in Valheim. All I had to do now was make the final trip. I grabbed the Yagluth and Modor heads and I started my journey back. Back to where it all began. I arrived at my original spawn point and I hung both heads on the altar and pondered about all that I've accomplished. After that I went to sleep and I finished the challenge on day 234.